Welcome to the Deep Dive. Today we're tackling uh, a really fascinating mystery, something that's definitely got people talking. The Bugosphere. That's right. This object, it showed up in Colombia back in March 2025. And what we have to go on is, well, it's a mix, isn't it? Witness accounts. Yep, witness accounts, some social media stuff buzzing around, especially on X. And, crucially, some initial scientific peaks, like yeah. x-rays. It all adds up to something pretty strange. Absolutely. We've been digging into these reports, the images, trying to sort of piece it together. So the mission for this deep dive. Well, we really want to explore all the information that's out there right now. You know, get past the hype a bit. And understand what the Bugosphere might actually mean, its potential implications. Exactly. Give you a solid, concise overview of this whole thing. Okay, let's dive in then. The discovery itself. March 2025, over Buga, Colombia. What did people actually see? Right, so the really key thing here is we have two separate accounts, independent witnesses. On March 1st, about uh, 1.45 p.m., a woman named Maria and a man named Jose, they both saw it and filmed it. From different places. From different places, yeah. yeah. Maria described it um, levitating, and she felt its movement was intelligent. Intelligent how? She compared it to like a trunk turning. Purposeful. She saw it go up pretty high, then come back down. And Jose, he was somewhere else. Apparently in the mountains near Buga, yeah. He also reported seeing deliberate movements. So the takeaway from both of them was? That it wasn't like any aircraft they knew. Or, you know, any natural thing like weather balloons or lightning. Right. They mentioned specific movements, too. Uh-huh. A zigzag pattern was reported, also glowing colors, and it definitely looked metallic to them. Okay, metallic zigzagging. And then there's this really weird part about it interacting with a power line. Yes, that's a major detail in the accounts. Just before it reportedly fell, it allegedly tangled or interacted with a high voltage line. Which, if true, that suggests, <laughs> well, it's solid, right? Not just a light phenomenon. Precisely. It implies a physical object interacting with its environment, possibly conductive even, makes things like distant drones or optical illusions less likely. So it falls, it recovered, and then x-rays start appearing online. What did those images tell us? The x-rays are um, quite revealing about the inside. They show it's basically a solid sphere, Okay. but with a core area that's less dense than the outer part. Less dense in the middle. And inside that less dense center, there seem to be 18 smaller spheres, microspheres. 18. Wow. And how are they arranged? That's the striking part. They appear to be uh, uniformly distributed. Very precise spacing. Uniformly distributed. Yeah, that doesn't sound random at all. That sounds like Exactly. Nine. It strongly points towards some kind of deliberate internal structure and architecture. Then what about how the sphere itself is put together? Oh, well, another really fascinating point from these reports is the lack of any visible welding. No seams, no traditional joining methods apparent. No welds. How do you make a metal sphere like that without welding? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? It suggests potentially very advanced manufacturing. Uh, unconventional, certainly. People have speculated about the metal type online, right? Yeah, there's been talk of titanium or steel for the outer layer, but, you know, that's just speculation based on appearance. We don't have solid compositional analysis yet. The x-rays mostly show density differences. So, just to recap, mm. dense outer shell, less dense center, 18 tiny spheres inside, evenly spaced, and no obvious signs of welding. That's the picture painted by the initial x-ray reports, yes. The lack of welding. What could that imply? Advanced 3D printing, maybe? That's one idea that was floated, yeah. Advanced metallic alloy 3D printing. We do print metal, but... But maybe not like this. Well, creating a seamless sphere with that kind of precise internal structure, those perfectly placed microspheres, it's, uh, it's noteworthy. It really pushes the boundaries of what we typically associate, even with advanced 3D printing. Okay, so the construction is a puzzle. Then there are the symbols, markings on the outside. Yes. Reports say the exterior has symbols. Some people have compared them to like ancient scripts. Like runes or... Runes, ogum, maybe even Mesopotamian cuneiform have been mentioned as comparisons. But here's the crucial bit, right? Those symbols, they're not inside it. Exactly. That's a critical distinction. They do not appear on the x-ray images we've seen. So they're just on the surface. Superficial, yeah. Which raises a whole host of questions. Like were they always there? Are they decoration? function. Or were they added later? Maybe after it was made or even after it was found? We just don't know. Being only surface level really opens up possibilities. This whole thing, it rings a bell. You mentioned the Bet sphere earlier. That was another weird sphere, wasn't it? It was back in 1974. And there are definitely parallels worth noting. The Bet sphere was also 
metallic. Right. And x-rays back then also suggested a solid outer shell with something less dense inside. Similar internal structure hints. But how does the Buga sphere differ? Well, the reported intelligent movement seems much more pronounced for the Buga sphere. That wasn't really a feature of the Bet sphere stories. Okay. And these external symbols are a big difference too. The Bet sphere was known more for um, odd acoustic and magnetic effects, not markings like these. So some similarities in the basic structure maybe, but yeah. different reported behaviors and external features. Okay. Which brings us to the big picture, UAP research. What does this Buga sphere potentially add to that conversation? Technologically first. Yeah, thinking about UAPs, the Buga sphere, if the reports hold up, points towards some serious technological capabilities. That lack of welding again. Right, the seamless construction, that complex internal structure. It suggests manufacturing beyond our, well, our current public knowledge. Even with advanced 3D printing. Even speculating about top-end metal printing, achieving that level of internal precision with the microspheres. It feels like a significant step beyond what we generally know is possible. It makes you ask what kind of tech could produce that. And that advanced manufacturing seems to link directly to the reported intelligent movement. It does. The zigzags, the controlled ascent and descent that implies propulsion and control systems that aren't easily explained by conventional aerospace engineering. Suggesting. Suggesting that maybe some UAPs really are engineered objects, possibly from entities with uh, significantly more advanced tech than ours. Okay, let's talk about the evidence. Eyewitness testimony in UAP cases. Yeah. It can be tricky. But here we have two people. And that's important, yes. Maria and Jose seeing and filming similar things around the same time from different spots. That corroboration makes it harder to just write off as, you know, a mistake or a deliberate fic. It gives a fuller picture. A more comprehensive view, yeah, mm -hmm. of the metallic look, the weird movements. You still have to be careful, of course. Handheld video, personal accounts, They're, they have limits. Absolutely. Camera shake, distance, environmental factors. But having two independent sources is definitely a strength here. How has the reaction been? Public versus scientific community. It's been interesting. The public attention seemed almost immediate and widespread. You saw that reflected in the social media discussion. Which feels different from some other finds, like the Nazca mummies you mentioned. Quite different, yeah. The mummies faced a lot more skepticism and a slower burn in terms of public acceptance, relatively speaking. Why the difference, do you think? It's likely a combination of factors. The Bogosphere story is dramatic, the sighting, the movement, hitting the power line, multiple witnesses with video. It fits a certain narrative people are receptive to. The classic UFO story elements. Kind of, yeah. And having those x-rays, even if preliminary, gives a sense of tangible physical evidence. Plus, figures like Shami Mawson getting involved amplifies the public reach. But scientifically? Scientifically, it's still very early days. The x-rays are a start, but proper analysis is needed. And as far as we know, there aren't official government reports or peer-reviewed studies yet. That lack of formal investigation is a gap. Let's widen the lens again. Are there other historical cases like this beyond the Bet sphere? Well, besides Betts, which has those structural echoes, you could look back at the Foo Fighters from World War II. Ah, yes, the lights pilots saw. Often described as metallic spheres or disks, yeah. <laughs> And critically, they were reported to exhibit intelligent movement, pacing Allied aircraft. So there are descriptive parallels, metallic, strange maneuvers. And bringing up the Nazca mummies again, the contrast in reaction tells us something about evidence. I think it does. It really highlights how the type of evidence and the narrative around it shape perception in this field. The Buga sphere had immediate visual elements and a compelling discovery story. Whereas the mummies lacked that direct visual evidence of say, discovery or behavior. Exactly. Leading to more controversy and skepticism, it shows how crucial the nature of evidence is and how these things are received. Okay, so let's try to pull together some possible explanations, theoretical frameworks. The extraterrestrial hypothesis is always lurking with UAPs. How does the Buga sphere fit there? Well, you can see why it comes up. The intelligent movement, the apparent advanced manufacturing, the unusual internal structure. These are all characteristics you could potentially attribute to advanced non-human intelligence. That's classic sign. Right. But, and it's a big, but we have major gaps. No confirmed material analysis, no official verification. So ETH remains speculative, a possibility, but unproven. We can't dismiss other explanations yet. Like advanced human tech. Something I, secret. It's definitely on the table. Drone tech, AI, material science, they're all advancing incredibly fast. 
Could 3D printing explain the seamlessness? It's a plausible mechanism for avoiding traditional welds, yes. And maybe the symbols are experimental markers or something. But does it explain everything? That's the challenge. The reported flight characteristics still seem ambitious for current public drone tech. And the precision of those internal microspheres, that uniformity seems uh, extremely difficult, even for our best manufacturing. So maybe, but it doesn't tick all the boxes easily. Then there's the skeptical view. Natural phenomena, or just a hoax. Natural phenomenon seems unlikely, mainly because of the reported intelligent movement. Meteorites don't do zigzags. Geological stuff doesn't fly around controlled. And a hoax. It's always possible. But creating something with that internal complexity shown in the x-rays without obvious seams or welds, that would be a very sophisticated, very well-resourced hoax. Unless there's evidence of faking it, it's just another theory for now. Clearly, we need more information. What are the next steps for research? Where should the focus be? Priority one has to be comprehensive scientific analysis. We need to know exactly what it's made of. Techniques like? Things like scanning electron microscopy, SEM, EDS for elemental composition, maybe neutron activation analysis. Really nail down the materials mm. and figure out what those microspheres are, what the symbols mean. And study the behavior. Definitely. Detailed analysis of the videos, more in-depth witness interviews, maybe even simulations to understand the reported flight dynamics. How did it move like that? And comparing it to other cases. Yes, comparative studies. Looking at the bugosphere alongside the BET sphere, alongside other well-documented UAP events. Look for patterns, differences. It builds a bigger picture. And keeping the public informed. Crucial. Transparent communication, countering misinformation, fostering an informed public discussion is vital as we learn more, or even if we don't. Beyond the science, are there bigger, maybe ethical or societal things to consider here? Oh, for sure. Just the basic question of ownership. Who gets custody of an object like this, found by civilians, moved across borders potentially? How should it be studied? There were worries about it ending up hidden away, right? Yeah, that anxiety exists, concerns about secrecy versus transparent, perhaps international collaboration. And then there are the symbols. Their potential meaning. If they genuinely echo ancient scripts, that opens up huge cultural and historical questions. You'd need archaeologists, linguists involved. Could it hint at origins or even past contact? It becomes very interdisciplinary. So wrapping this up, the bugosphere is, well, it's still very much a live mystery. Definitely. You've got the strange discovery, the tantalizing x-ray clues about its inside, those weird symbols on the outside, and just a lot of debate about what it is and where it came from. It really is a compelling case study within UAP research. It absolutely is. It challenges our assumptions, pushes the boundaries of what we think is possible, technologically and maybe otherwise. So here's a final thought for you to chew on. If you consider this blend in the bugosphere, what looks like really sophisticated tech alongside symbols that seem almost ancient or communicative, what might the intention behind an object like that even be? What new questions does it force us to ask about how we investigate the unknown? It certainly leaves you thinking. Thanks for taking this deep dive with us today.